In today's video, I'm going to be running you through a session I had with world number 112 Jerry Shang in my time at IMG Academy. This is going to be a full session breakdown where I'm going to look through each of the areas of the session, what we worked on, and in a little bit more detail show you kind of a behind the scenes of some of the stuff you wouldn't see in my video with him, which is now on my main channel, link in description. We started off the session by hitting up and down the middle, essentially just trying to find a rhythm. We did this for around, I think, 15 minutes. We set out these cones essentially to see who can hit the cone first, but we wouldn't carry on to the next drill, which was crosses, until someone hit the cone. So as you can imagine, the pressure was slightly on, as I didn't fancy being here for around 20 to 30 minutes going up and down the middle. Thankfully, I'm playing with a very high level opponent and we managed to achieve that reasonably fast in around, I don't know, I wanna say 10 to 15 minutes. But as you can see here, just kind of feeling the ball, getting a rhythm for the ball at the beginning of the match, I, uh, beginning of the t uh, session. I didn't feel that Jerry's rhythm and level at this point was kind of out of my kind of arsenal. I think it was reasonably similar. What you could tell is how consistently and how deep it was coming back. No matter kind of what I was giving him, it was always coming back in a, in a high level. So that was the, one of Jerry's biggest weapons. Obviously, he isn't like a, a huge guy who's hitting insane balls. So, you know, he has to rely on the timing, the movement really well, and he does that amazingly. Uh, I was having to work really hard and move my feet a lot just to kind of keep that ball cross with a good level, of course, trying to hit the cone as well. As you can see, we moved on to some forehands cross, uh, again, working the exact same thing, just trying to hit that cone, feel a rhythm. I was really trying to move on to the ball as much as possible. Uh, I think, you know, when I'm hitting these cross-court balls, I'm always thinking, okay, how can I, you know, hit a few balls where I'm, you know, hitting head over the ball, a few balls where I'm increasing the racket head speed, just trying to find ways of just adapting to a, a different style of player from Jerry, of course, a lefty as well. And here, you can see I really begin to kind of find my groove a little bit on this cross-court. We then moved on to the backhands. This one took us a little bit longer, I think maybe 15 minutes uh, to hit the cone. I think that this one was a little bit more of a, a struggle from me on my side with that lefty slice pulling me out wide on the backhand side. Um, a lot of you will know when you play against a lefty, it's really tough that the ball that's just hitting uh, that they hit is a lot very different to a normal backhand. You can see here Jerry, uh, physical unit, and we had to you know, take some breaks obviously after we've been hitting for around 15 20 minutes. Micah, as you can see here, giving me some ad advice on kind of my shot, especially on that backhand side, telling me not to kind of close off too much. Micah was great throughout the week, super high energy. Uh, if I ever go back to IMG, I'm definitely gonna be, uh, gonna be with Micah. The most American guy, uh, in my opinion, I loved it. So here again, working on the, the backhand side in the crosses on the, other, on the other side, obviously me facing the sun now. We also then transitioned into some two ones, uh, two twos actually, which is basically two cross, two line. One person's always stuck in the same corner or not moving, and one person is moving. I think here we've started doing that drill. My main focus here, you can see me, I'm, I'm kind of about a meter, two meters behind the baseline. I'm just trying to really keep a focus on being consistent, having nice height and depth over the net and not really making mistakes. Uh, I think you know, this is usually where I'm quite comfortable, but of course, if I see a short ball like you saw, I'm gonna move in, move forwards and try and you know come up. Now Jerry's in his forehand corner. Um, I'm just having to kind of go back to him. I'm just trying to, use that line ball as a switch as opposed to like an aggressive ball. Uh, I think in a lot of points, sometimes it's easy to say, oh yeah, aggressive down the line, but actually, you know, it should be seen more as a, as a switch. And uh, yeah, taking another break here, it was very humid out there. Even though it was March, I think it was still 25 degrees. And for myself in the UK, that, that's pretty hot, so. Also guys, as this is a brand new channel, I'd really appreciate all of your support to help grow this channel so we can reach a huge audience. So make sure that you go down there and click the subscribe button. And now let's get back to the video. And then we did the exact same thing on the other side.
One thing I was putting a real focus on here was, you know, my, my movement and my positioning. I wanted to make sure that every single ball I'm striking out in front, I'm nice and balanced on every single shot and then I'm able to put my full body weight behind it. I think especially on those wider balls, it's important to maintain the racket head speed. I've been playing around with my strings, my tension, my racket weight and stuff at the beginning of this season. So it's all a little bit different. So just have to get used to that. Side to side got me different. He hits it so clean. I'm real. Four and cross to your backhand. Yeah. Try to just stay disciplined. Backhand cross. If you see, if you see the look, take it. But anything that sits up for you forehand, you have to take it. You have to dictate yeah. the first opportunity you can. Because if not, he will. Yeah. All right. So just yeah. let it rip a little bit. We then moved into some open points out the hand. Feed cross, hit cross play. This was my first kind of opportunity to see where kind of Jerry's level was at. But I really enjoyed the competing element. We'd hit so many balls already this session. I actually felt really comfortable. And I began to say, play some really good tennis. sometimes. Don't be too eager. Not big enough game. We then warmed up some serves. Jerry put a real focus on every single serve. I said this in my main video, uh, link in description, where I played against him. But he has a real focus on every single serve, having a you know a target, a first shot, kind of where he wants to go. And I think I tried to kind of emulate the same thing because I think that you know if you can kind of envisage that you're warming up for the match, that's going to help you a lot when you actually go to to start playing points. So here, here I'm going to show you all of the points that me and Jerry played. Again, if you want to see the, the full video where you know I break it down, talk through these points, I'll leave a link down in the description. I'm just going to let you watch every single point that we played. I think the level was very, very high from both of us. I was very happy with how I played. I think it was a, a real step in the right direction and how I, how I need to be playing against a lot of the Futures players. And uh, yeah, enjoy.
So Jerry with a match point to take it to 5-1 in this uh, mini set tie break. And it travels long, Jerry wins, but uh, overall a very good session. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure that you subscribe. This is a brand new channel. So let's try and hit 20,000 subscribers on here. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.